Hi, my name is Max Sansaloni. Welcome to the art of creative beat making. In this masterclass, I'm going to show you my entire process of how I go about creating my beats. You know, from the beginning of just choosing a kit to maybe the thoughts that I had before on why I chose that kit, uh, choosing the heads, tuning, choosing cymbals or any other instrument that I'm going to use, miking the kit, uh, and then finally mixing and processing the sounds. And this is not a standard miking, mixing, basics video. It really is my creative process. And I'm really going to try to show you, really without holding anything back, every step of the way of how I do it and how I go about it. And I show you every step of the way, but I don't have set steps that I follow. There are some things that I do all the time, but I really just explore, experiment. I think when you want to be creative, you really have to have an open mind and really allow anything to happen. And it means making a lot of mistakes. And this is a huge part of the process. You can't do it without making mistakes. And this is how you learn and this is how you know what you don't want. And the only way for you to get to the sounds that you hear in your head is to trust your own ears because they're your ears and my ears are my ears and Steve Gadd's ears are his ears so I love Steve Gadd he's one of my favorite drummers but I can't be Steve Gadd you know he's inspired me in so many different ways but in the end I'm Max Anceloni and these are my ears so if I want to be creative and come up with sounds that are inside of me I really have to trust myself so this is what I think is the most important part of creating something and creating something unique and creating something really good is to trust yourself because you're the only one who knows what you want, what you like, what you don't like. Those are very important words, what you like and what you don't like. That is all that you have to base your decisions, either if they're uh, beat making decisions, sound decisions, miking decisions, mixing decisions. You just have to go by what do I like and what don't I like. And if you don't like something, you fix it till you like it. So whatever that means, fixing it. So it could mean muffling a drum. It could be tuning it differently. It could mean miking it differently. It could be EQing it or compressing it. So many different things. But just follow your own ears to guide you on what's good and what's not. And if you just keep doing that, you're going to have an amazing final product. And not only an amazing final product, but a very unique to you. And also, it's like giving yourself a gift. Something that is already inside of you, that you're giving yourself. You're, you're kind of manifesting it into a physical form or to sound. And then when you hear it at the end, you know, it's something that you love. It gives you so much. So this process is really a spiritual process. You really learn a lot about yourself because you really have to kind of forget everything that's out there. Everything that, you know, all the videos or people telling you this is how you should do it. Or, this is how you should do it. This is how you should mix a drum set. This is how the EQ works. And you always EQ a, make an EQ cut on a bass drum here and do this. You have to forget about all that stuff. And I'm not saying to not learn the basics, you know, technical side 
of learning mixing, of learning drumming, of learning miking, of learning tuning, and all that stuff. But if you really want to create your own masterpieces, you really have to forget all of that and just go with what I like, what I don't like by using this. And if you think about it, this is the only thing you could do because there is only one you. So the reason why I made this video is not so you could just see my process and copy it. It's really what I'm hoping that you get out of this video is that when you finish watching it, you really get inspired to start creating, to start creating your own beats and your own sounds, to not be afraid to just do it and to not be afraid of the end result, whatever that is, because it's going to be you. It's going to be a part of you. In the past, you know, when I would try to create something or try to mix something, I would really be blocked. I would stop myself from recording anything, from putting an idea down, because I will say to myself, you know, I still need to learn more. I still need to learn this and need to learn that, learn more about mixing, learn more about getting sounds. But that's actually what stopped me from doing it. To really get creative, you just have to start whatever that means. So if it means trying to get a different sound from your snare drum, just put it on and start turning lugs and start experimenting and using your ears as a guide. Do I like this? Do I not like this? Discover new sounds. And in the same with the mixing process. When you go through it, put an EQ, even though you've never used an EQ, put it on a kick and just see what sounds good to you? Boost it where it sounds good, cut it where it sounds bad, and just go with your ears and just start doing it. And also, you don't have to know exactly what, what it is that you're looking for. Most of the time when I'm, when I'm creating, I don't even know what I want. I just put a drum set up, I start experimenting, and then from listening to certain sounds, it might, you know, push me into a certain direction and I'll go in that direction. Always going by what I like and what I don't like. And from there, it'll take me to so many different places. And sometimes it won't work, you know, and I'll learn from that because I'll, I'll know when I did this, I didn't like it. So the next time you'll do it differently. But I got so many amazing, to myself, just what, what I consider amazing. Amazing beats, amazing sounds that I really love. And it once you start doing this, it just motivates you and inspires you to do more and more. And this is what I'm hoping, uh, just from this video, that you'll get from. The biggest thing is to just start creating and not be afraid to do it. Just start doing it even if you've never done it before. So I think it's important and it is a good exercise to learn uh, sounds from records that you love or from drummers that you love and try to replicate that on the drums uh, with the, the kit you choose, the tuning, the miking and also the mixing and processing. I think it is a good technical kind of uh, exercise to do that. But when being creative, uh, I really believe you have to let go of all that stuff and just find and see what's in yourself. Because if you don't, you, you have those things in your mind taking space and it doesn't allow for like new ideas to come out. To be really open about something, you really have to kind of start from a blank sheet as much as you can. You might have an idea of something, but have that idea and not try to copy something else. It's like, let's say, if you're uh, looking for a really rare bird, let's say a, a really rare red bird in a, in a jungle, 
And so you're walking in the jungle and you're looking around for this really specific bird that you want to see and you've wanted to see for such a long time. So you're really focused on just looking for the color red and looking up in the branches to see where that bird could be. But in the meantime, while you're walking in the jungle, you're not really seeing everything else. And what I mean seeing is like on a, on a kind of deeper level. There might be other beautiful birds. There might be other beautiful plants and different things that you could be missing. And it's the same when you're creating. If you have a set thing that you're really going for and you're really rigid about it and try to go for it, it doesn't allow space for new ideas and for you to experiment with new things and to be really open and to go fully in a direction that might be very you you might consider extreme if you're really looking for something very specific so i think this is really important to the art of creating is to really have an open mind and to try whatever your ideas are no matter how crazy they seem to you just go for it just try it and see it might not work but it might work and turn out to be something so amazing unique to you so really my process is a very very simple one like i said i just follow what i like and what i don't like and whatever idea i have in my head I follow that idea, whatever it is. I just go for it and try. And you know, it's it's led me to so many dead ends where it's like, oh, it's ridiculous. This doesn't work, you know? But that, like I said, is really a huge part of the process. And to not be discouraged when that happens, it's really an important part of the process to just keep doing it. When that happens, Stop if it makes you feel bad, take a break, go home, go for a walk, do whatever, something fun you want to do. Come back to it the next day or later on in the day, whatever it is, and just whatever idea you have, go for it again. This is the only way you're going to get to something that you really love. And this is like really the artist's path. It's not an, always an easy path because we really uh, judge ourselves and other people judge us. You know, when you put something out, you get praised, you get judged, and you have to learn how to deal, first of all, from yourself, being judged from yourself. You really have to deal with all those feelings. And just when you really look at it, it's not rocket science. We're playing drums we're getting sounds, we're making music. If you don't get to something you like, it's not the end of the world. You're not gonna get hurt, you're not gonna die. You just try again. So the way I set up this masterclass is, uh, first I show you guys the kit, then I show you guys the heads and the symbols, just what it is I'm using. Then I show you the tuning of the kit and the muffling of the kit, then the miking of the kit, and I also talk about why I made certain decisions. And then finally, the mixing and processing. But for the intro, I did the exact same thing, showing you all those steps, but just with a standard sounding kit. So just a kit that I want to get a nice, fat, warm, punchy sound from. The reason why I did this is just... I do believe there are some basics that you need to know just for tuning, for muffling, for miking, that technical things that could get in the way uh, for even if you're distorting sounds and twisting tones around, uh, I believe things that you need to know. So I hope you enjoy this masterclass as much as I enjoyed making it. So let's get started. So here for the standard sounding kit, this is a Rogers Holiday from the 60s in a red sparkle finish. One of my favorite kits. Uh, and the snare drum is a Rogers uh, Power Tone from the 60s. 
And uh, the sizes of the kit are, the, the bass drum is a 20 by 12, which is very unusual for Rogers in the, of those years. Uh, it probably was like a special order. Uh, very rare to find uh, 12 inch deep drums from Rogers. Uh, but I really love that depth because it really has a really focused low end and very, very punchy. The tom is a 13 by 8. Floor tom is a 16 by 16. The snare, 14 by 5. And uh, for the heads, uh, for the toms, these are Evans uh, G1 coated on the top. As you can see, there these are very, very old heads, very used. And these are the heads that I, I got when I bought the kit. And I really like using old heads, heads that are used. Uh, I rarely change heads on my kit unless I really have to. And, you know, the heads get pitted and they're hard to tune. What happens is that you can't tune them low because then they just kind of go bong. But I really like old heads because you get a kind of uh, almost deader, warmer sound from them. For the bottoms of the toms, I have just Evans clear resonant heads. For the snare, on the top I have an ambassador coated. The bottom, I have uh, Evans level 360, uh, just resonant side, snare side head. For the symbols, these are PGB artisan symbols. Uh, these are made by uh, a symbol maker here in Montreal. He makes wonderful symbols, custom-made symbols. Uh, this is a what he calls experimentation series. This is a 19-inch uh, crash ride. This is a 22-inch experimentation series, also ride. Uh, and this is a hybrid flat ride. So it has a little tiny bell, but it almost sounds like a flat ride, the definition of a flat ride. And these are really, really old hi-hats that I got when I bought my first kit uh, that my dad bought for me. These are, they're called New Vader, very, very cheap hi-hats, and they're all cracked. But I just really like the sound. They have a really dry, kind of dead sound to them, and I just uh, like using them. Let's look at the tuning of the drums first. And I'll just show you guys how I tune each drum. So let's start with the, with the rack tom, which is a 13-inch tom. And I'll take the heads fully off, put them back on again, and just show you how I tune. 